Jesus said to his disciples, you will desert me, everybody will leave me, and I will be alone. Yet I am not alone. I am with my father. So in a situation where you think that everything is gone, a situation where you get into anger and the worry, Jesus is saying, remember, you are not alone. Therefore, put your trust in the Lord and uh, worry not. Say it. Put your trust in the Lord and worry not. Trust in the Lord. Say it. And worry not. I pray from now henceforth, you will cease worrying. And you discover the power of God working in your life, working in your family, working in your career. Heavenly Father, I pray that from today, nobody will be trapped again by worry. Nobody will be trapped again in anxiety. Father, you say we should be anxious for nothing. Therefore, Lord, no matter the reason for our worry, we pray it shall be destroyed today. And may the Lord open your eyes now that you may see that you have a father in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Sit down, child of God. We are in a time when troubles are all around. We are in a period that people suffer one thing or the other. And everybody is getting anxious. Everybody is getting worried. But I have a message from the Almighty God which says, Worry not. Trust in the Lord. Or, trust in the Lord and uh, worry no more. Stop getting worried about anything at all. Hallelujah. You may not know tomorrow. You don't know what will happen. No matter how you see it, you cannot predict tomorrow. Your life is not in your hand. Your prosperity is not in your hand. No matter what you do, you cannot by any means affect it. Therefore, the only way forward is to put our trust in the Lord. Say trust in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. I will show you what the Bible says there. Trust in the Lord. Say it. With all your heart. All. With all. And do not lean on your understanding. In all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Amen. I want to tell you that the writer of this particular passage is Solomon. Solomon was a great man. The Bible said that of all the people born of a woman, nobody ever rose in greatness like Solomon. A man full of wisdom, we call him the wisest man on earth. And of course, he was the richest man that ever stepped his foot upon the planet earth. In all his ways, he summarized it. He said, man, I was able to come up to this level because I put my trust in the Lord. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He has a way of making things happen. Amen? When you remember that Solomon is advising you, you will know that the advice is very, very important. And of course, it is not just Solomon, but the Holy Ghost that is asking us to stop getting worried, but to put our trust in the Lord. So, how do we know what will happen in the, by tomorrow? We don't know. But it shall be well with the righteous. What about the kidnappers and the armed robbers? I don't know. But it shall be well with the righteous. What about your business? Will it prosper tomorrow? I don't know. But it shall be well with the righteous. Amen? Learn to put your trust in the Lord. David said, I will look around the hill. I will look up my eyes and look onto the hills. Where will my help come from? He said, my help will come from the Lord. Who is the maker of all these hills? So no matter what you are passing through, my brother, the only way forward is to put our trust in the Lord. And uh, number two, we can always remember that those who put their trust in the Lord were never put to shame. Those who trusted in the Lord were never put to shame. David trusted the Lord. He was not put to shame. Joseph trusted the Lord. He was never put to shame. Jehoshaphat trusted the Lord. He was never put to shame. Jehoshaphat said, 
in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20. He said, O oh Lord, of the truth, the army surrounding us are greater than us in number and in power, but in you we put our trust. And eventually, when they came to the front war front, they discovered that the angel of the Lord has killed all those enemies. Touch them and say, learn to trust the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know what you are passing through. How can she stop it? Brother, I don't know. He can't stop her. You can't stop her. You can't stop her. Oh no, when I bend you can make the same thing. But I tell you, it is only one thing that will solve the problem. And what is that thing? Put your trust in the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Say, Oh God, I cease to be God. Go and do what God can do. And I will do what man can do. Take your problems to the Lord and leave it there. And he will surely deliver you when you put your trust in him. Take your problems to the Lord. Leave it there. When I look, to, when I look at some of your faces, I discover you are carrying your problems. Take your problems to the Lord. Leave it there. He will surely deliver you when you put your trust in him. Take your problems to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your problems to the Lord. Leave it there, brother. He will surely deliver you when you put your trust in him. Take your problems to the Lord and leave it there. Carry your problem to the Lord and leave it there. He will surely deliver you when you put your trust in him. Take your problems to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your problems to the Lord. Leave it there. Oh, but take that back here. He will surely deliver you when you put your trust in him. Take your problems to the Lord. Leave it there. Oh, yes. Leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Bring your own problem. Take your problems to the Lord. Leave it there, brother. He will surely deliver you. When you put your trust in him, take your problems to the Lord. Leave it here. Whoa, leave it here. Oh, Nanya Jalwo, leave it here. Yeah. Take your problems to the Lord. He will surely deliver you. When you put your trust in him, take your problems to the Lord and leave them here. Amen. Your problem is that you carry your problem. Touch your neighbor, say your problem is that you carry your problem. That's all. Take your problems to the Lord. Don't come back with it. Take your problems to the Lord. Leave it there. And he will surely deliver you. If you put your trust in him. Take all your problems to the Lord. And leave them there. Everybody stand up. Leave it there. I am leaving my own there. Leave it there. Throw your problem. Throw your problems to the come on, throw your problems there. Throw your problems to the Lord. Leave it there. He will surely deliver you when you put your trust in him. Cast your burden unto the Lord and leave it them there. Leave them there. Leave them there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Cast your burden. Cast your burden to the Lord. Leave them there. He will surely deliver you when you put your trust in Him. Cast your 
accordance to the Lord and leave them there. Hallelujah. See that child of God. The Bible said that Hannah took her own problem to the Lord and they left them there. And when she got up, her countenance changed. You pray. And you keep on crying after your prayer. You know why? You took your problem to the Lord. And you took them back. Someone said to fear. From now onwards. I have no problems. All my problems are with the Lord. He knows how to settle problems. He is a burden bearer. For me. I will not carry them again. Say to fear. I cannot carry any problem again. My God will carry my problems. My Father will take care of me. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. So, when you are praying, until you pray, you will keep on panicking. But when you pray, you will stop panicking. Because definitely, when you take your problem to the Lord, the Lord will answer until you worship, you will continue in worry. But when you stop worrying, you will start worshiping. If you want to cut off worry, be a good word, worshiper. Drop your problems and give him thanks. Hallelujah. Anytime, anyway, let's continue in the message. So, that passage particular says, do not lean on your own understanding. Put your trust in him. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Acknowledge him in your business. Acknow Someone say, Acknowledge him in your business. In your ma come on, can I hear your voice? In your business, in your marriage, in your school, in your destiny, in your office, in your career, in your relationships, in your feeding, in your everything. And when you acknowledge the Lord, what will happen? He says he will direct your steps. Hallelujah. Now let me show you why it is difficult for you to trust the Lord. Four reasons why we fail to trust the Lord. Four reasons. Number one, self-sufficiency. Many of us are self-sufficient. You try to solve all your problems by yourself. Many of us are so brilliant. That is why the brilliant ones, they don't do anything. They don't progress in life. Many brilliant ones. Greater knowledge, greater percentage of brilliant people don't do well. Amen? That is true. Smart people. They don't do well. Now, listen to me. In the destiny journey, in the destiny race, in Igbo cosmology, Amen? The dog and the tortoise have to run. That's what we call destiny race. Now, the dog is skilled in running. But what happened? With fastness, he trusted in his strength, trusted in his fastness, trusted in his uh, everything. All your man said, Pia! and the dog ran. After a distance, other factors came in. Human factors came in. He decided to turn left, turn right, eat this, eat that, Distraction, diversion, destruction, and then a little sleep, a little slumber, and poverty came. And the dog went into the bush and they slept off. But the tortoise consistently continued walking, walking, and crawling, crawling, and going, going higher, going further, going steady and slow, and steady and slow, and steady until he won the race. Be wise. Hit your neighbor on the chest. Say, Be wise. Amen? So don't just put your trust in yourself. Don't say, I am brilliant, I must pass this exam. Don't say, I am beautiful, I must get married before others. Don't say, I know how to do business, I have learned it very well. Don't say, I am starting this business with enough capital. Don't say, I am now ogre. Don't say, I am now married and I'm a baba undertaker. No! When you try to solve your problem by yourself, without taking your problem to the Lord, you fail. And what will happen is that you will not be trusting the Lord. These days, a lot of people are dying. You know why? They trusted the medical power. Actually, going to hospital is good. But you discover Jesus healed all those that were oppressed by the devil. 
Most of these sicknesses are direct oppression of the enemy devil. And it is spiritually inclined. I'm not saying that all of them are spiritually inclined anyway. But what about those that are spiritually inclined? You trusted Panadol more than you trust God. You trusted your doctor more than God. Put your trust in God. And he will make it happen. Amen? Come on, somebody shout amen to that. So number one is self-sufficiency. We are always sufficient. You can't marry such a person. Therefore, he trusted only himself. Intimidating everybody. Even his own children. Everything is all about him. My brother, such a person cannot put his trust in the Lord. But I tell you, there are cases in life that unless you put your trust in the Lord, you cannot uh, overcome them. Number two, we are too quick to call on others. Some of us are so smart. We are friends. Amen? So any little problem, you call this person, you call that person, you call that person. Before you know it, everything about God has disappeared in your life. You won't learn to trust God. Because you are always depending on your connection. Connection for this. Even feeling form. Most of us can't even feel form again. For a monk at an hour, and you get on your feel, look at any give form. He feel loose or meeting each of your feel, look at so I will not even cook. It is either Mr. Biggs or Mr. Mrs. Biggs. I'm telling you, one man called me and said, Man of God, do you believe that now? the only pot in my house is the one I used when I was in the university? No pot, no plate, no spoon. And the marriage has lasted for not less than two years. I see Mr. Biggs. And I may see Mr. Biggs. So because of all these things, the little one, all these things have denied us of the presence of God. You have connections all around. But let me tell you, it is not by power, nor by might. Power means the power of one man. Might means the power of many men. God said to Zerubbabel, this mountain, your hand started building this house. Your hand will finish it up. But not by your power, nor by the power of many people. It is by my spirit, says the Lord. There are a lot of things in your life that connection cannot do. Learn to put your trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three, some of us feel so distant away from God. Maybe because of our sin. We feel that God cannot even answer us. Therefore, we don't need our holy watching even man of God, man of God. But you are making a very great mistake. God is loving. Do you know that the prodigal son is a prodigal, but he's still a son? Do you know that the father prays that the prodigal son will come home? That was why the day he saw the prodigal son coming home, the Bible said the father ran and they kissed him. And he changed his cloth and he changed his shoe even before he entered the house. Think about that. The father loves you so much. There's no point in time that you tell. In short, let me tell you when your child develops problem, you develop more love. Amen. You develop, you create a special attention. Some of you, you think that God has deserted you. It's not true. Instead, God has created special attention in order to bring you back. Am I right? Are you sure? Is that point clear? So I pray that nothing will ever make you not to put your trust in the Lord. Number four, some of us enter into worry. Now, instead of putting our trust in the Lord, you just sit down and worry. You just sit down and keep on thinking rubbish. Something that can never happen. You keep on imagining. Hallelujah. Good and fine. You know what he did? He turned his face to the Lord. And he took his problem to God. And the God solved it. Agwa kwala elai na bea garasa. Oba, chebe, nka, chebe, nka, so, at the end, if you bata, or they confused. If you bata, they know chebe, if chine ke mefe masere, chine ke mefe masere. Agokla, David, because of if I mele, aru ye mena be, David fell flat, and said, oh God, have mercy. And God had mercy for him. So you can now see, 
Open up the body is how well and a problem got that was. But it depends on how you handle it. Some of us, instead of putting our trust in the Lord, we begin to worry. Come on, hit your head. Say, Oh my head. Oh, my head. Away with worries. Yes. Amen. Yes. So, four factors that are responsible for your not putting your trust in the Lord. I said, number one is here, you are so sufficient to yourself. Number two, you are so connected with people and everything, with machine, doctors, lawyers, and barristers, everything. Instead of God fighting for you, you use your connections and do everything you, within your reach. And at the end, you might fail it. Because the penina you are fighting might be an agent of God to help you pray more. The man that you are fighting, who is your enemy, might be the man that sold you into Egypt so that you become a king in Egypt. And in attempt of fighting for ourselves, we lose God's direction. Am I what I don't know? Eh? Some of you say no numwe no chungwe. Ochun kem kan kono by time stamp. Hello. Though I have been born full of agony, no helper, no comforter, no guide, no counselor, yet on high, yet on high. Yet on I must I fly like an eagle, bam. Oh, like an eagle, like an eagle. On high must I fly. Yes, he's in me, he's in me even now. He's with me, he's with me even now. So on high, so on high, so on high. More fly. If there, no helper, no comforter, no guide, no counselor. Rejected, dejected. Yet on high, must I do what? Fly. That is how life is. Put your trust in the Lord. He will surely direct your way. Amen. And the way you think that the thing is not forthcoming, the next thing you do is that you begin to worry. Child of God. I want to tell you something about worry. Worry. Amen. Let me give you six reasons why you should not worry about anything. Six of them. Number one, worry is unnatural. Is what? It's unnatural. By the way, what is worry? Worry is the state of being anxious and troubled over actual or potential problems. Being worried. You are anxious. Fana baka siga. Uchi chena bi agi. Maka problem. Ineche na problem agi megi ne gabia. Ma bu problem mo bi agi labi already. You are not baka siga. Uchi chedi 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 chedi. It is what unnatural. Why is it unnatural? Jesus said in Matthew chapter six. He says, Look at the birds of air. They have no ban, and yet they are not worried. Onwe le ne te no no wa ne che bo onwe na broso so madu. Nothing worries itself on this earth except man. Amen. So it is unnatural. It's not something God created. So from today, I pray that you will not get worried again. Yeah. Number two, worry is unhelpful. It does not work. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 27. There is no way you can worry and add a cubit to your life. Your worry cannot solve any single problem. It cannot take away the problem. three days time. If also get open Amen. three days and can solve Man, your worry cannot stop that. Also, again, worry. I'm a make official one. You cannot. So worry does nothing. It does nothing in your life. No matter how you try to worry about your husband, worry about your business, worry about your marriage, worry. You say, man of God, I'm getting much worried. Eh? This my son is not behaving well at all. He's not getting along well in mathematics and English. I don't know. My husband has started behaving funny these days. And I'm getting worried about that. Madam, continue to get worried about that. But you cannot stop him. Worry cannot stop anything. It's not needful. Amen? Jesus has already promised you that your worry can never solve a single problem. So why are you getting yourself involved in something that you cannot, that is not beneficial? Eh? 
Ota ino kita ngoli fine cheche ba nyina kuya. Eh? Chesi we ike no. On na ji sike. Yi chegide 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 eh oso ofo onwe. Bia gwam akolonga ka mwana Jesus bo nyi beli. So you must learn to withdraw your thinking from all those anxieties because they can never help you. Amen. Number 3. Worry is not needful. You don't need it. It's not needful. Because the Bible said, your father in heaven knows that all those things, you need them. Say, do not worry about what to wear, what to eat. Do not worry about how to go to school or what to, how to build a house or how to get a good wife. Do not be worried about the husband. Careful, my boy. A serious problem. Do not worry about a child. When we got, I got married to this beautiful baby here. Beautiful what? Yeah. Baby. We were praying that we will have a, 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 a female child as our first child. That was our agreement. So we prayed. And as I was praying for a female child, I was, each time I want to say female child, I will see myself using personal, I mean uh, pronouns, personal pronouns in the masculine. And then I okay, okay. I stop. I will not pray this prayer again. Nothing will ever make us have our first issue as a, a baby girl. It will be a baby boy. God has put word in my mouth. I'm on your okay. And I called her, I said, I will not pray for anything called a child again. If Mwoke, come. If one, come. Amen? So the first one, baby boy. Second one, baby boy. Third one, baby girl. Fourth one, baby boy. Before my wife, you get away, you thank you. We need to see you know you are more than one or so. After 11 solid years, we now have this one that is saying, Yeah, <laughs> and yet she's a baby girl. So, what am I saying? You don't need to worry about this thing. Your father in heaven knows that you need a baby boy and a baby girl. Your father in heaven need, knows that you need the best husband ever. Can we go? Papa cannot give you a jodi. Amen. Your father in heaven knows that you need all those. He said, Do not be worried. Do not be anxious. Well, you can pray and say your heart desire, but don't be anxious about that. You might be anxious. Getting worried. Getting disturbed. Because of a situation. In all like this, a malarola. Picture upon picture will be flying through your brain. Before you know it, you look at the clock. It is 2 a.m. You have not slept. You are just thinking about getting a husband. How can it happen? The truth is that it cannot happen. You see that your mind? It cannot happen. But when you take your problem to the Lord and they leave it there with the Lord and they come back and they worship the Lord and you see it will do what? Happen. The way it will happen. The way God wants it. Amen? So keep on worrying about your unbeliever husband. You cannot change it. One day, your husband must die. Or your wife must die. Amen. Do you know why we But I will surely first of all die. So you better prepare your heart and mind. The day I die, don't even cry. Give glory to God and say, my husband told me, I will first of all die. And take care of your children. Enjoy them. Amen. I'm not asking anybody to give me anything. Give to your mom. I go chop food for inside <laughs>
Agonia. Idenia. Am I even high again? Blindness. Lack of knowledge. And the, and the, some cray, 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 it don't see crazies. Do you know why? Children belong to their mother. Whether mom is good or bad, everybody never easier than they are never gonna never hear. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if you make a happy mama has it, um, I say give Jila can give Bugawa high school. Um, I say give it don't matter no che. We let school name your family no ano. It is only now you have authority. By fifty cc authority, we go to their mom. Chicken, I'm telling you. So, what must be, must be. This is the fate for every man. They interpret how you love them by the way you love their mom. Get it right from the onset. So, you better be wise. So, stop getting worried. Hand the problem over to the Lord. Worry is not needful because your father in heaven knows. Even before you pray, your father in heaven knows all your needs. Amen? Amen. Number what? Number four, it is an insult to God. It is what? Because it means that you have forgotten all the promises of God. It means that you are belittling your father. Now worry. Amen. No child ever worries how the mother gets the food or the father gets the food. They only say, Mama, I go to the Factually, maybe see with Tanya. So, by getting worried over your problem, is that you mean that your father has no power of solving your problem? My brother, that is the greatest insult ever. You are belittling the power of your father. There's something God cannot do. Trust him and you see how he will do it. In short, God wants to do exceedingly abundantly, above all you think or ask. That the glory of his grace shall be magnified. Touch your neighbor and say, Stop insulting God. With God, all things are possible. If you want to ask, ask big. Amen? Stop insulting him. Get out from that, your worry. If you need the school fees, say, I need the school fees. And see how it will come. If you want to travel abroad, say, I want to travel abroad. And you see how it will come. Stop saying as in a God. As in a God, again. Do you know what it means? You are cutting off God completely. And that is number the number fifth point, Abi. Anytime you get worried, you are an unbeliever. You are no more believing God. You turn yourself to an unbeliever. Oga, okay? if you need anything, say it and get it. Full stop. Stop living below standard. The whole Ago kingdom. If you need a house, say, Lord, I need a house. It is the father that builds a house for children. If you want to travel abroad, say, I want to go abroad. And see how your father will do it. That's why he said, God will grant you all your heart desires. Stop getting worried. Then, number six. Worry is unreasonable. Is what? It's unreasonable. It's not logical. Now, look at it this way. All of you are believing God that God will take you to heaven. Three of us. Now, how can you believe God that he will take you to heaven? But you cannot believe God that he can pay your school fees. Which one is greater? Any God that cannot pay your school fees cannot take you to heaven. Everybody never can ask up you will pull an ass up to the man. You quit and won a chinaki as up to the Naka police. You go on a chinaki as up to the Naka and robber. Mani, when a chinaki as up to the Naka, you will look at Ogagan a bear, nay, anyway. Okay, watch it now. If you are able to believe for the bigger one, you are supposed to also to believe for a lesser one. That is why worry makes you unreasonable. It questions your reasoning, it's logically incorrect. Amen? Amen? The argument is this. God, who gave me the strength to kill the lion and the bear, will also give me the strength to kill Goliath. God, who saved me from sin and Satan, will also save me from alcohol. Mm, 
Ndo Naro Kedun Keka Ndo Nife Jason Kedun Keka If he gave you life Then he also Able to give you food Why are you worrying about food? Can't you see that Your argument is illogical? So you must stop getting worried. So how can you overcome worry? I give you two solutions. Number one, every day. Ask God to be your shepherd. Or remind yourself that God is your shepherd and your father. It is the duty of the father to supply everything that is needed in his family. Everything, both protection. The father protects you. The father feeds you. The father takes care of you. The father educates you. The father cares for everything about your life. Every day, remind yourself and have a helper. It is his duty to do all things. Amen? Amen. On the table, no sony room. Now you're doing a magic. Number two, give him first place in your life. He knows every need. Before ever you talk about consulting the doctor or consulting any man, first of all, consult God. It will save you from worry. Oh, if you have that dog on night, bah, pia, na boni mo no. Before you make check, bela na pata afeju. You will not even call anybody again. And the answer will. So don't worry, call your brain. Never hear on the black guy now with the answer. If you do suppose what? Or you even hear a voice. My father, look at what is happening. What you hear behind you? Shut up! I'm in charge. You will not know me again, again. Apoa, all she have at any me. So take him to be your number one in life. Any time you are getting worried, you have dethroned God. You are saying, I don't know where God is. Amen? Amen. Number three. Learn not to worry about tomorrow. God has only given you one day to live at a time. You cannot worry. There are two days you cannot worry about. How many days? There are two days in a week. You can never ever do anything about these two days. Do you know the two days? Yesterday and tomorrow. So there's no way you can worry about yesterday. It's gone. Open this road, it's gone. If I go, you cannot reverse it. You can't reverse it. No go, go, you can't reverse it. Miscarriage, oh go, you can't reverse it. You have nothing to do about yesterday. And you have nothing to do about tomorrow. These two days are not in your hand. The only day that is in your hand is what? To bear. Therefore, he says, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry himself for you. Child of God, I believe from now on, you will learn to trust God. And worry no more. Can I hear you say Amen. Unfortunately, some of you, you don't have Jesus in your life. God is not your father. So how can he come in to help you? There are two kingdoms. You are in the kingdom of Satan. God cannot cross over because of legality. Nobody can come onto your family to take anybody there. The only thing you can do is you can stand in your family and say, Oh, who is there? Please help me. That is the only way somebody can come over and help you. Otherwise, you charge that person of trespassing. God cannot cross over from his family to the family of Satan to help you. The only thing you can do is remain in the family of Satan and the shout. Say, Oh Lord, help me. When you say it, he will now come over and then help you because he gave you freedom of choice. If you choose to come over to his family, you say, Lord, I want to come over to your family. I'm tired of this Satan. I'm tired of the old family. I'm tired of the kingdom of darkness. And God will bring you over and then now begin to help you. How long will it take you to make a decision to come over to a family 
Ose who nature bu no we ono banyere who no geri. No and them boys oh no other fact they make any nature bu ham because some them boys they were on na they have no father in heaven. Stand up. So who want to come over to the kingdom of God? Raise up your hand. Say my father. I am tired of the kingdom of Satan. I will, I don't want to be a member of that kingdom again. Thank you for saving me. Today I receive my salvation. Jesus is my Lord. And I ask him to come over and be my Lord. Oh God, I want you to live in me. And walk through me. I want you to be my father. I believe Jesus died for me. He took away my sins. He baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. Baptize me with the Holy Ghost and fire. And make me to be a better son of yours. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you have said this prayer with all your heart, I can assure you, your name will be cancelled automatically from the book of death. And be written in the book of life. I pray that from now henceforth, everything about your life will change. In the name of Jesus Christ. What are you desiring? Whatever it is, receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your open door. Receive your open door. Receive your healing. Be healed right now. Be healed of arthritis. Be healed of rheumatism. Be healed of diarrhea. Be healed of diarrhea. Be healed of appendix. Be healed of appendix. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed of ulcer. Ulcer la. Ulcer la. Goit la. Goit la. Be healed. Be healed of heart problem. Be healed of your liver condition. Let your liver be healed. Let your liver be healed. Let your kidney be healed. Let your kidney be healed. Let your eyes be healed. Let your eyes be healed. Be healed. Receive financial favor. Financial favor. One million, ten million, twenty million, one container, a piece of land, a car, motorcycle. Receive it. May men remember you. May women remember you. May Father in heaven remember you. And it cause men to remember you. I prophesy. In this month, you will receive financial favor. Somebody will receive a parcel of land. A gift of a car. A visa to travel abroad. Somebody will receive millions of naira. Somebody will receive scholarship, 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 scholarship. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. The angel on assignment will pursue, we recover, we pursue, overtake, and recover, and bring back your wife, your husband. Your child, your wayward husband, your wayward wife, your wayward children. Let the angels of God bring them back to the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Remain untouchable. Madaga Metogaka. Armed robbers cannot touch you. They cannot steal your phone. They cannot steal your car. Armed robbers will never encounter you. Kidnappers will never enter your family. Anything that will make you cry will not come your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. 